Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashar. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will learn about different types of domain in Oracle SOA 12C. In our last video, we installed SOA by following four very simple steps. We downloaded the jar, uh, we installed JDK, and then we installed SOA using the command prompts and uh, very simple commands. And now in this video, we will configure SOA domain so that we can start deploying and testing our services in WebLogic server. So let's start. We have three types of domains that we can configure. My personal favorite to quickly start development, deployment and testing is standalone domain. However, there are very good chances that in your company, you are using compact domain. Let's see what are the main differences uh, between these domains. So we have three domains. We have WebLogic Server's default domain in JDeveloper, standalone domain and compact domain. Default domain and standalone domain, they both work on lightweighted Java database. Uh, however, the main difference is that default domain is chained with JDeveloper and a standalone domain is independent of JDeveloper. Uh, we'll discuss what it means when we will talk about individual domains in detail. Compact domain is probably the most complicated out of these three domains uh, because you will need a dedicated database and you will need to create all necessary repositories by running RCO with compact domain. Now let's discuss each domain in detail and configure them one by one. So let's first talk about default domain. Default domain is created on integrated WebLogic server, which is chained to JDeveloper. That means when we close the JDeveloper session, WebLogic server also shuts down. An integrated WebLogic by default uses Java database. So this default domain also uses Java database for its internal tables and schemas. It's very lightweight, very easy to configure and suitable for POCs on your local machine. There are some drawbacks of default domain, like this is chained to JDeveloper. That means every time you start a new JDeveloper session, you will need to relaunch integrated WebLogic server. And whenever you close JDeveloper, your server also shuts down, which is definitely a headache. Also, managed file transfer, enterprise service scheduler, healthcare, B2B business activity monitoring components are not supported as part of default domains. But if you just want to sort of start your learning with SOA, create a few services, deploy them and test them, see how Java database works, then this will suffice the purpose. So let's start the demo and configure the default domain first. All right, so this is our JDeveloper, which we saw in our last video that it gets installed with the SOA quick start installation that we did in, la in our last video. So we'll have to open the JDeveloper. And as, as we just learned that default domain is chained with JDeveloper. So we'll come to here under Windows, we'll go to application servers. Now under application servers, we'll see this uh, domain, default domain. So we can right click on this and we can click on this create default domain. We'll click here and we'll give it a password. We can leave everything as it is just password and we'll need to confirm the password and we'll click on OK. And here, as you can see, it says running integrated web logic server. So it is now creating the domain. So let's just wait for some time. Okay, as you can see, uh, it took around four minutes and our service, um, our domain is configured properly. Now we'll need to right click here and we need to start server instance. Let's do that. All right, as we can see, our SOA platform is running and accepting requests. So that means we have successfully configured our default domain and now we should be able to access our WebLogic console and enterprise manager. So let's see if we can do that. 
here we go as we can see localhost colon 7101 was the port that we conf uh, that we did when we configured it and console to access the weblogic server let's type in the username and password All right, as we can see, we are able to log in. Let's check a few important details here. So if we go to server, we can see that our default server is running and our name of our domain is uh, default domain. I am going to check our enterprise manager as well here. Excellent, as you can see, our enterprise manager is also here. All right, so that's how you configure your default domain, which works on Java database in background, which is very lightweighted. You can start developing your services, deploy an EM and test it. I think the only downside of this domain is that it is chained with JDeveloper. So if you close your JDeveloper session, your uh, WebLogic server will also shut down and you'll not have access to your console and enterprise manager. However, there is a simple fix for that. You can configure a standalone domain by just executing one single command. That I'll explain you in, in my next video. So in my next video, I'll explain how we can configure a standalone domain. What are the main benefits of having a st standalone domain over the default domain? Thank you so much for watching this video. Take good care of yourselves and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you.